Aloha artists, Miss Maggie here. This week, we are going to continue our underwater adventure and add to our background. We are going to add a middle ground, some coral reefs and animals that live in and around them to our middle ground. And so these parts that are closer up. So what are the supplies that you're going to need this week? You are going to want your painting from last week, the one you did on your large watercolor paper. If you don't have that, if it's not painted, go back and find that watercolor paper and watch that video because that will be our background for this whole artwork. And you are going to need a small watercolor paper for the art this week. And you will need a pencil, an eraser, and a Sharpie. And we're going to do two types of coloring. We're going to do oil pastels. And with oil pastels, it's good to have a paper towel. And we're also going to paint. So you will want your watercolors, paintbrush, and water. And of course, that paper towel will still be useful. And also, we have some cutting to do today. So hmm, this is a lot of supplies. What are they again? Your painting from last week on the large watercolor paper, a small watercolor paper, pencil, eraser, sharpie, oil pastels, paper towel, watercolors, brush, water, and scissors. Go get those supplies and meet me right back here. So today, we're going to go on another dive underwater and we're going to look again. We are going to look for details that are in the middle ground, not the things that are right up close as if that fish was going to look you right in the eyes and not those details that are disappearing off into the blue, but those objects that are a little bit far away and you can see some details on but maybe not a lot. Look closely and see what details catch your eye. Just this past weekend, I went scuba diving at Ahihi Cove, just past McKenna. This place is a preserve, meaning that the fish and the coral reef are protected. No one can fish here, and so there isn't any fishing line or weights or hooks for turtles to get caught on here. And oh, is it amazing. Can you hear that? It's the whales. And here I am following a la willy willy nuku nuku oi oi there. And wow. Look at those shapes of the coral. Oh, look, there was a little spot underneath. And oh, wow, that one's an amazing shape. And look at the textures on it. There are so many interesting shapes and textures and lines among the coral. And those yellow tanks, they're really important for coral reef health. It's really special seeing them. And ooh, pencil urchins and vana. I'm going to remember these details for my coral reef. What details are you going to remember for your drawing? What part are you the most excited to see here? You can come back and watch this part again while you're drawing and painting because, I mean, isn't it full of beautiful detail? Oh, there's just so much to take in and then put into your artwork to make it beautiful. So, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to create a coral reef kind of like this. And then I'm going to make a second one that'll come down on the other side too. And so you get to add in all the interesting little details that you want to have in your coral reef. So how am I going to do mine? I have this here for inspiration and my coral reef is going to start high and it's going to end low. So make a little mark so you remember it's going to end low and a little mark to remind you that it starts high. And so, hmm, I am going to start with a wiggly 
line like that. I'm gonna have it cut down like that and I'm going down because remember I have to end low, but I also want one of those antler corals that has so many wiggly parts coming out of it. And when I look at these up close, I see crabs and shrimps hanging out in them and little fish. They are really popular little ecosystems. And so I'm going to make a big one of these coming out there. Maybe this comes down again. And I'm going to do some other shapes coming up. And hmm, I think I like the idea of, ooh. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do one of those arcs like I did in the other one, but this one's actually going to get cut out. Ooh, you can try this if you want to. It's a little bit of tricky cutting, but I believe you can do it. Just a little one like that. And I'm going to decide what else to add here. I am going to have a couple different types of coral on here. I'm going to do another shelf here and actually some coral reefs, some coral makes this sort of shape and some of them are further under and some stick out. This looks like this could be a good sleeping spot for a turtle. And I'm going to put another one of these antler corals on here. Look at those wiggly, wiggly lines coming out in all directions. Ooh, I like that. And, hmm, what else? I'm going to do some more shapes coming off. I'm going to do some Vana. Vana are just beautiful, but ooh, give them space so you don't end up with spines. Such spiny sea urchins they are. I'll have that line keep coming down, sort of like it's overlapping from these. Hmm, what sort of animal should I have in here? Should I have a honu hiding inside there? Let's look. What did it actually look like in the video with the honu underneath here? Well, there's the shell, there's his head peeking out, and there's a fin. I can decide if I want that fin sticking out or tucked behind. I think he's going to be tucked back in there, taking a nap, but maybe just peeking out a little bit. So there we go. I've got him there now. A couple extra lines I'm getting rid of. Hmm, what else shall I add? How about a hey -e and octopus? I didn't see any on that dive, but they're one of my favorite things to see. I'm gonna make another little hiding place here with some more coral reef shapes, and I'll have an octopus hanging out on them. I'm not going to draw every tentacle because some can be hiding. I've got an octopus there, and I think we need an eel. There was an eel in there. So he's going to be sticking his head out there peeking out okay where else do i need texture where else do i need details oh wow let's see i think a couple more bits here and some vana 
I think that's a good start. I might still add a little bit more, but let me show you what we're going to do once you have yours mostly drawn. We're going to begin to cut it out because see this part here, all that, that can be another coral reef. So I'm not gonna worry about a careful cut, but I do want a close cut. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut close to the coral reef. So I'm not wasting any watercolor paper. Watercolor paper is so valuable. We want to use it all, or almost all of it anyways. And this is gonna be an interesting shaped paper. So what I can do is, I know this has to be cut out better, but I'm imagining it going right there. And this one could go right there. Or, I could find some other way of using it, but the best way is see how this part is lined up along that end, and this part is going to line up along that end. So I'm going to have layers of coral reefs, just like you have when you're underwater in this habitat. Isn't that great? So, I know this one, I might need a little bit more details, but what about this half? Hmm, how shall I make this half really interesting? I don't want to use these lines exactly, but I can use them for inspiration. I'm going to do some coral going there. I think I want that to be a ledge there. And then I'm going to have this one kind of wiggle its way down. But right here, I'm going to put one of those wonderful antler corals, all its pieces sticking out. So what animal do you want to have in your coral reef that I haven't added yet? What is it missing? And you just think, well, that's got to be in there. And here I have some low coral there. And I can decide which one do I want in front of which. Ooh, this, if I have it in front, I'll be able to see through to something interesting here. So, ooh, let's see. Where is that going to line up to? That's going to be right about here. I'm going to put a parrotfish. They've got kind of a beak. I think that body needs to go back a little bit more for the parrotfish. I'm going to put some coral that the parrotfish is nibbling on. And so keep imagining that you are underwater. What details do you notice in the coral reef? What sort of lines and shapes are those coral formations and what animals live among them? Oh, wow, it's going to be amazing. And so there we go. Those two are going to go like that. So once you have all your pencil lines drawn that you want to keep, then it's time to sharpie. So I'm going to go over all of these lines on both these pieces of paper now. And if you are still finding more details to put in, you definitely can still use them. I can't wait to see all the details that you add for yours. So take your time, show off those beautiful details. We didn't do any sharpening in our background because it was soft and far away, but these are close enough that we want your details to be bold and beautiful. Okay, I have a sharpie, time to erase. So I'm holding one area and then pushing the eraser away. Oops, make sure your eraser is clean. And there we go. I've got one done and the other. And I let all those little eraser bits, shake them off, send them into the trash, and now Ooh, let's look at how these are going to go together. I think 
like that. But before I color, let's finish the cutting. I have two of these to cut careful lines so that the edges of my coral reefs are really clear. So take your time, go over these edges. I know it takes some work, but that hard work is going to make your artwork really shine when it's done. If there's a part that's kind of tricky to get in there, then cut around it and then get in there and do it. So I'm even putting some little cuts like that and then getting in there. So we don't really want to cut off too much of the Sharpie then we don't want to leave white that's on the other side of the Sharpie. Do the best you can to get right on those interesting lines of your coral reef. Okay, mine's coming together. Those are some tricky parts. I think this next part will be a little bit easier. Whew, I got it. Now, if you put a little hole in yours, which is fun, but you don't have to, I'm gonna put a little tiny pinch right on that hole, not all the way across, just on the hole, and do a little snip right there. And now that I have a snip, I can get my scissors inside that hole and I can cut, cut, cut so that it fits. There we go. Ooh, I like that. Ooh, that's going to be really neat looking straight through to there. Okay, now I gotta cut this one too, right? Whew. This is a good workout for the hands. You are building muscles in your fingers and in your hands and in your eyeballs and brain to be able to really notice what you're doing, make choices to make those details really stand out and to use the scissors as a tool to help them stand out. Great work, okay. I'm going back and noticing where I missed. Like I bypassed this area, now I'm gonna go back and make that coral look interesting. Give it that interesting shape. You've got this. Your careful cutting and your focus will show in your artwork. Okay, I think I like it. It's not exact, but I think it's gonna look so neat. Yes, it's working. So I have those two parts there. It's time for color. First, I'm just gonna get rid of all of my little bits of paper. This is all of that sheet of watercolor paper that I didn't use. That's all that's left over. Good job. Okay, so for these two pieces here, I'm gonna use oil pastel for texture, adding in some little bits of color, and then we're gonna go over it with paint. So, hmm, what colors did you notice in the coral reef? I noticed a lot of different colors. A lot of them were soft, but there were some little bits of interesting colors. Like there was some red algae I noticed at one point. So I'm gonna put a little bit of red in some areas and I'm gonna put in a little bit of purple too. So I'm putting in whatever sort of texture you think they should have. I think I've seen this sort of color in the antler coral sometimes. So I'm gonna put some little bits of that color in. And I'll do it on this one too. Since it's the same habitat, I'll put some down in there. And add in those light to colors, those dark colors. Keep putting in those interesting textures. So sometimes when I do oil pastel, I say, you gotta fill it all in. With this one, 
we're putting in little bits of color because we're going to go over it with the watercolor. What details, what textures did you notice while watching the video of the coral reef habitat or maybe in your own time snorkeling? I think that all of those details that you notice can help make this artwork amazing. Keep putting in those textures, keep finding interesting colors to include, keep filling it in in little ways, but leaving white paper too, because that is where the paint will go. Wow, all this hard work is going to make a masterpiece. So every part of my coral reef has some sort of texture, color with oil pastels. And now, once you have that, we can paint and get your water and your brush and everything you need for that. Now, when you look underwater at the coral reefs in the middle ground, are the colors really bright? There might be a little spots of bright color, but they're probably kind of soft and washy, but with a lot of interesting mixed colors. So I'm gonna do a lot of mixing today. Like if I think there's some areas that are sort of brownish orange, well, I can use some orange, but I'm gonna use some brown with that. And let's see, I'm gonna put that in this area here. Ooh, see how that orange is standing out on top of that? So I decided, where am I gonna paint? This part here, what color? Ooh, I was inspired by that color there. And what stroke? I jumped right in, didn't I? But I'm slowing down now. I'm gonna hold my brush like a pencil. I'm gonna hold it by the metal part and I'm gonna use the tip to put the color where I want it. And I want it in this coral ledge right here. And so, ooh, sometimes I'm using the side of my brush a little bit to drop it in and fill in those larger areas. Ooh, I like that. Now, how about if I want a darker color for that coral there? I have some purple on there. And if I go with black, it's just gonna fill it in all the way. But if I do some purple and brown and maybe a little bit of blue in there, that's gonna be a really nice dark color. And so I'm putting it in this darker coral here. I'm making sure that that color that I mixed, which was brown, purple, and blue, is staying just in the area I chose. Those other colors are standing out. Ooh, I can try it with more water or more paint. And I'm filling in those areas that I like for that color. I like that. Hmm, I wonder, is there anywhere else I could use that color while I have it? I think maybe down here a little bit. Yeah, we'll do some of those coral bits dark like that. You know what else I can do? I can drop it in and create texture that way. Or maybe a little shadow underneath those, a little texture like that. Ooh, I'm going to try a little bit of that color and the orange together on some coral. Oh, look at that color there. That was those two colors that I made blended together. So experiment with mixing lots of different shades. Every area of coral can be a slightly different color. And some areas might just have more water. Some areas might have more paint. I want to do some that's got a little more blue to it. There we go. Kind of like that there. Hmm. I might put another color in with the blue, but I like that. And see how I have a lot of water in there? It's not as light as the background that I made last week. Whoops, I'm not paying attention. I'm putting it into the other areas. Well, how about I just take some of that and drop it in so it feels like that. Now I'm gonna go back to stopping and thinking, where am I putting it? In this area, what color? What color? Well, I mix this blue and what stroke? I'm gonna use the tip of my brush some of the time and if I'm using the side of my brush, 
I'm going to be extra careful that I don't put the paint into the other sections by accident. Okay, but I actually feel like that blue does need something else to it. I think I have a plan, but I do like that I have the whole, that whole section blue. I'm going to make a yellow with a little bit of orange and then drop that in, but not everywhere. I'll let it be more coral reef texture. Now, how am I doing it? I'm wiggling my brush and using just the tip, just the tip wiggled brush. A little more paint, a little more water. Fun, huh? Ooh, I like that color. I'm gonna do more yellow in it. Use it on the antler coral there and here. What haven't I done? The Honu. Haven't done the Honu, and I think there's some shadowy areas under here that should be done. Because if it's a darker spot, it probably has a shadow. And that Honu is probably darker in color too, but I think it should have a little blue and green in there. So the hone is nice and dark, shadow is dark. I'll give the he'e, the octopus, a little color. And where did I miss? Where was I lazy? See a couple spots. If I just want the color to go there, I just put a little water on it and those color will flow to those spots. That's all I'm doing right now. Little drops of water, oops, not big drops of water, little drops of water and it starts to fill it in. Hmm, I think a little bit more yellow in some spots and I'm layering colors at spots too. See how with watercolor, you can put colors on top of colors and they start to look really neat. Okay, well, I better do the next one and then I can see how they look together, what they should both have. Hmm. What did I do on this one that I really want to make sure I do on this one? I think I liked that color for the antler coral and I have one right here. So I'll start with that and then keep going. You keep going on yours. If you remember last week when we painted the background, we used large brush strokes, didn't we? And a lot of water. How much water do you think I'm using this time? A lot? Or a little bit? Is it dripping everywhere? Is it flowing everywhere? No, I'm using just enough to have the colors follow where the tip of my brush is. That's that other difference. I'm really using the tip of my brush to put the paint just where I want it. That gives me control. That allows each coral reef to have its own color. I can't wait to see what yours looks like as you add all the colors to yours. Okay, I'm going to look at them next to each other now and see, is there anything else that they both need? When I look at them one last time, I think I want a couple little dark shadows in there and in there. I like that. Maybe not that much, just a little touch. Yes, I like that. Those colors need to go down to the ends. And wow. Okay. So this is what I want you to check and see. If your artwork is not drippy, if it's drippy, then you need to give it a moment. I think mine's a little drippy. I'm going to just go down, up, down, up. Those are the two drippy spots. Okay. I think I'm all right. Move my paint out of the way, bring in last week's masterpiece. So be careful of any paint, wet paint or anything. And I'm going to put this on top and this on top there. And we can get an idea of how the artwork is coming together. So next week, we're going to create some larger animals that can swim through your ecosystem. And after that, We'll put these together so that they stand up and stand out three dimensions.
dimensionally. And so this week, we look closely at the coral reef again, looking for details in the middle ground. We drew, we cut, we colored with oil pastels and paint. We made sure we had texture and interesting colors. That's a lot. Isn't this going to be an amazing piece when it's all done? Please take care of your pieces so that they stay safe between our videos. And also, here is your reflection question. We use our drawing and painting skills differently on your background than we did on your middle ground today, didn't we? What is different between how we painted last week and this week? And why does this week's artwork look closer forward? Why does it look like it's in the middle ground instead of far away? That's what I'd like to know this week. Okay, share your artwork with me, share it with your teacher, keep it safe, clean up your art supplies, and I'll see you next week. Ahoy ho!